All right. So do I have to say anything fancy or do we just get into it? Yeah, why not you be fancy? <laughs> There we have All it, right. folks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is me, Stephen. <laughs> this is him, Stephen LaFond. And I am Jazz LaFond. And we are the creators of Whichever Path. And uh, we're here to talk about some folklore and some fun, nitty gritty stuff. You guys voted, and very quickly, it almost was another extra from the world of Whichever Path, but. Last minute, all those votes that came in, turned out you guys wanted to hear one more folklore episode, and so we have one, and today we are going to be talking about sin eating, Mm -hmm. and it is one of the big things that actually had to do with our very first storyline, Squirrels, so I am here to let you know a little bit about sin eating, and not only just stay in the European side of it, in in the Welsh part, but know that there's actually a sort of ritual and deity in Mesoamerica that also had to deal with sin eating it's and gonna filth. It's going to be interesting stuff. Yeah. You. So I'm already <laughs> super stoked about this one. So sin eating. Yes. What is sin eating? I feel like that's the question I should be asking. That is right. I'm prompting you <laughs> to prompt me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Steven. Tell us about sin eating. What is it? What do we need to know? Okay, so this concept was actually greatly documented in the UK, although it was happening in Bavaria and various parts throughout Western Europe. The idea would be that it would be sort of a last-minute sneaky indulgence outside of the church. Sometimes it would be a hermit in the woods mm-hmm. or you know, just living right on the outside of town. And what would happen is, is after someone had died, they would bring a loaf of bread and some beer. They would place it over the body. And uh, basically all of the person's sins were supposedly absorbed up into the food. And the sin eater would devour that, therefore taking the sins of the deceased into himself, allowing them to escape damnation. And then hopefully as the years passed, another younger sin eater would come along and do the same for him. Well, you had me at hermit and then you really had me at beer. Then you lost me at sin, but then you got me again at the younger hermit coming along. I like this a lot. I like the idea that (laughs) what you love is that if it can make you some sort of curmudgeon that hides in the woods, you would gladly do the Russian roulette of damnation. Just so long as you had a function and free food and beer. I know what I am. <laughs> okay, so this is really, really interesting. Um, and I'm curious how you came how you how you came to find out about this sort of mythos. Well, this was actually because I'm a Catholic, I think, mm. is that it was an idea of it. There's all sorts of weird apocrypha and things that like kinda get push down at you Mm. even though it wasn't an exclusively catholic thing i mean most of the things that are being um, documented as the practice began to go out of favor through folklore was often done by people who were in the anglican church Mm. but i was all i thought it was particularly interesting this this idea of someone who believed themselves to be able to cheat and take a shortcut even though at the time the idea of confession and buying indulgences from the church was also possible. Mm-hmm. And it's probably because the actual payment that one would give a sin eater was actually a lot cheaper than one would give some sort of crooked priest. <laughs> Fair enough. And then when it came to the Anglican part of the church, like the whole idea of paying and then the Protestant Reformation, so things that are happening in Bavaria with the Lutherans, everything, the idea of paying Catholicism to watch your sins away 
was a no-no. So, mm. well, what do you do? Yeah. You pay, you know, scuzzy Pete and he and he will, yeah. you know, eat some bread over you and then you can, I don't know, get to purgatory. It sounds like the bootleg version of Salvation. Like, like this, like the Sin Eater is almost like the laundromat bootleg selling <laughs> uh, way of being absolved of your sins versus like the sort of straight away go to Target costs a little bit more but it might be a little bit more legit which is really interesting to me yeah and so <laughs> and so like it comes from welsh culture and it's often associated with that whole area so at funerals they'd hire poor people who would take upon them all of the sins of the deceased um and this is from doc diarist john aubrey who was the earliest source of the practice um one of them i remember lived in a cottage on ross highway uh, he was a long, lean, ugly, lamentable rascal. Oh, that's oh, that's very detailed. Fucking charming. That's so specific. Um, the manner <laughs> was that the corpse was brought out of the house and laid it on the bier. A loaf of bread was brought out and delivered to the sin eater over the corpse, and also a mazer bowl of maple. So gossips mm. bo- buoy full of beer. So like he's got like a big old thing of beer, um, which he was to drink up, and six pence in money, in consideration whereof he took upon him ipso facto Hmm. all the sins of the defunct and freed him or her from walking after they were dead so the idea is like you know for a lot of people the idea of damnation too wasn't necessarily hell you just become a fucking ghost wow you just swayze your way around the afterlife okay well a ghost because because hearing that i automatically thought walker zombie (laughs) <laughs> no they really no okay. n- n- not the walking dead but more like the like the weird trans translucent yeah affleck <laughs> fair enough fair enough and you said that this also has roots elsewhere in the world yeah i mean so this was happening you know in in bavaria uh, we also see you know some of these things happening in romania a little bit it's largely just kind of loses its practice like around like the eight, the late 1890s there's like the last one that's witnessed in Shropshire in, in in the UK and the whole idea of this was that you know they i think that as the age of reason with air quotes was going on this kind of fell more out of favor um which is weird because when you think about it if you go to the part of the last supper that's basically where a lot of this is based on because the idea is, you know, Jesus brings up the bread, take of it. Mm-hmm. You know, this is my body, which will be given up to all of you. You know, you eat Have the bread yeah. yeah, and you drink the wine. So you, so you drink the, you drink the, you know, you drink the blood of Christ, you eat of his body and your sins are forgiven and you've now found your way in. That's sure. the whole Eucharist story. Mm-hmm. Well, for the sin eater, he's just kind of like, yeah, I'll eat this dude. <laughs> Metaphorically. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it works out. Mm. But, what I wanted to talk about is that there was an actual, like, Aztec goddess mm-hmm. of filth and lechery. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Who's that? Why is it even? Out. Why does it even matter? It doesn't matter. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Someone who forgot to put their phone on. So by professional. <laughs> it was sticker mule. St- it was sticker mule. <laughs> They just got a free plug. <laughs> okay. All right. Tell me about the Aztec goddess. All right. So in Mesoamerican civilization, and you can thank Wikipedia for that beginning, mm-hmm. um, there was Talatso Total, and that's the Aztec goddess of earth, motherhood and fertility. But not just that. It was also of filth and oh. awful. And a little bit of lechery, a little bit of the like unforgivable stuff, sin itself. Wow. Now, here is how you would wind up confessing. You actually had to go to a priest of this goddess. Mm. And before her, you actually kind of admit all the things that she would have the domain over. All of your bad deeds, all the lechery, all of that stuff. There was an encouragement of the idea she would encourage you to sin. And now for purification, you actually have to now say to her, okay, here's all the stuff I got up to. Mm. And, you know, it 
was not small stuff. Like, wow. like for, for them culturally, it was pretty <laughs> transgressive. Okay. Um, and, and that was, you know, what you would do. You would, mm. you, you'd confess your sins and go for your perfication, for your murder, for your, 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 your really bad avarice, your, your horrible mm-hmm. theft. Lechery. Yeah. We'll just say lechery. 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 Leching around. Um, but she was also the deity of dirt and the wow. eater of odor. Oh. Um, so the idea would be like, you know, she, she would eat, she, she basically, she, she ate your stuff. She ate mm. your poop, <laughs> you know, like she, she, she ate the poop of your soul. And the then, waste. yeah. And <laughs> there you go. You were, you were all set, you know, like it, 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 I loved the idea that you had a God that basically fed on your dirtiness yeah, and encouraged your dirtiness. Yeah. You and that eat. was actually something that was really big. And when we started writing, squirrels that i was really into that mm-hmm. part of that legend was the or that mytho- mythology was mm-hmm. that there be a hungry force that really wants to eat your sin yeah but like full out that whole part of you out like just wants to devour it mm-hmm. and at the end of squirrels which if you haven't heard it yet and this is how you got introduced to the podcast i'm really sorry <laughs> but there's a force that comes through the door mm-hmm. to devour people that seems to be part of what the whole sin eating was going, what, what, what was doing the whole time. Yeah. So Mr. O winds up breaking his bread apart and confessing all of his sins for like two hours because mm-hmm. he was a really bad dude. And then the squirrels devour his sins as a purification, sort of. Yes. But he hadn't confessed everything and that's what was the gateway to ruin for him and that brings us to another big thing which was of course the judaism idea of the scapegoat which featured pretty (laughs) almost literally in squirrels and the idea would be to you know it, it starts in leviticus and we basically get the goat that departs you know um Yes. The idea is you put all of your sins and all of the the issues that you're having um, all together. Um, you put it upon this goat, and then you basically literally remove the goat. You outcast it into the desert, and it's part of the ceremonies of the Day of Atonement. And that's began all the way back with Exodus. I felt like that was a really powerful part, too, is to marry the idea of these two weird legends where you take an animal or a person and you put all of your bad stuff onto it Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you can escape whatever punishment or, or suffering. And when they come together on the farm, it was the idea of basically the Coke and Pepsi war (laughs) of dime store redemption. Yeah. And that they weren't meant to be mixed that way. Mm -hmm. And so what you're seeing on the farm is sort of, somebody thinking that oh the pitcher of coke is almost empty just pour some pepsi inside it too no one will notice (laughs) and if you're one of those people who says there's no difference between coke and pepsi you're wrong you're wrong (laughs) and they shouldn't be mixed and you should feel bad one is bad Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah agreed agreed that is really interesting um and i remember when I heard squirrels all put together being kind of fascinated by the fact that these, and again, you know, spoiler alert, non-alert, um, that the squirrels became so fascinated with Mr. O, um, at that point and wondering what, what that draw was, what that, that, that hunger was and knowing that there was something lingering in Mr. O that was attracting them all. That's, that's pretty interesting. That's really great. I like Thanks. That. I mean, and, and also the idea of the bread actually came from the idea of the Dutch idea that was linked to sin, sin eating, which was uh, the um, dood cakes. Mm. So like, or the dead cakes. Like, mm. And so what it, they would be, would be, they'd be like these loaves of cake, uh, of cake or bread that would have the initials of the deceased carved into it. And they'd be given out at funerals, sort mm. of. Wow. And so that was a tradition that actually came over to the States in the 1700s still. Mm. and particularly that was what was really interesting here is because I 
there was a Dutch population in New Hampshire. And so as this family has gone on and it was mainly French Canadian as times passed, cause look, everybody's fucking, mm-hmm. um, the idea of eating this bread, these loaves, they're all made that way on the farm. Like mm. it's not like, Oh, somebody's eating beef jerky and it's the same thing. <laughs> so the burial cakes that we were talking about they're they're a tradition that actually lasted even past sin eating. It became a cultural idea for for like white europeans to mm. kind of like have this like baked in yeah soul protector wow because hey bread is bread bread, bread is bread is bread and yeah it was very, <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> i mean that was like a big thing for it um i feel like you know it what's what's interesting about the idea of this was that there was also and I feel like this is a blasphemous idea, but it's a conceit that I think you can even see in an evangelical thought, mm. which is that the miracles that happen in the New Testament related to redemption or salvation, mm-hmm. a lot of these modern day preachers, even though Jesus kind of warned everybody off on that, had a shortcut where they could perform the greatest yeah. feats that only the son of God could do. Yeah. And that, that's where, you know, you see these things like sin eating was the cost effective way of doing it. And it was superstition. And it is even kind of predates pre Christianity a little bit, mm-hmm. but it took on all those trappings just like how, you know, some guy believes he can just blow really hard and get all the COVID-19 out of the room, you know, like, <laughs> This type of faith healing and this type of like, you know, physical manifestation based on the miracles that are mentioned in the Bible, Mm. it comes from this conceit that, and maybe even from even a slight colonial mindset, Mm. you know, in North America, when we, when we we absorbed it is the idea of, well, why can't we, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, why can't we do this? Yeah. And maybe he is the engine to do it, but we can do it. And the answer is like, <laughs> why should anything be beyond my reach? Right. Yeah. But that's also comes from the idea of what's the shortcut and sin eating in itself is kind of like the last dish attempt to keep somebody from, yeah. from suffering. And in this day and age, with the way that the church is, with the way that everybody feels damned already and everything, the idea of having, this farm where people could confess their sins and bleed for it and be purified was really fun to do. Mm -hmm. And then we have like this whole epilogue series that's on, uh, that's on Patreon that we kind of go into why it may not have worked out the way people thought. Yeah. Yeah. It was really fun to make. Hmm. It was fun to make. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. You know, I I hope that people learn a little bit of stuff. I mean, there is really, there's a really huge in-depth thing on sin eating from lore. Mm. Um, You know, Aaron Mankey goes into it and he's way more serious and he's not, you know, playfully giving his spouse shit for their phone going (laughs) off like that. I'm going to have to eat some bread for that later. Aaron Mankey needs to catch up. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean, this funeral, uh, the, these funeral customs, like it's all the idea is it, w- I always loved the fact that regardless of what happens and how religion brought into it, there's also this weird will working mm. witchcraft mentality that people still take in believing that maybe there's some agency that they can take after the fact, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, that is falls short of actually just doing the work for, to redeem yeah. themselves. Well, that's the time. <laughs> yeah i think that that's very accurate <laughs> who does have the time i hope you all have the time mm-hmm. and speaking of which i hope that you guys like this episode if not i'm sorry don't worry october 1st we begin our brand new season and oh, yeah. it is going to be all of the storytelling and voting and choice that you have come to love from us um in the meantime Uh, Feel free to write to us, tweet at us at whichever path. Follow us on all social media with the same name. That's W-I-T-C-H, Everpath, because it's a fun pun. And 
we can't wait to go from being our silly selves into our i don't know more refined spooky dooky selves spooky silly that's silly. right <laughs> so happy 60th day of halloween oh yeah getting spooky